For our first application of the dependence lemma, we're going to show that an independent list can never be longer than a spanning list. All right, so let's start off by just introducing some notation. I'm going to write little l, scripty l, uh, of a list to be the length of the list. Okay, so with that in mind, let's take a look at proposition 223, which I'm calling a theorem. And that says that if V is finite dimensional, um, and uh, A is an independent list. And B is a spanning list. Then, um, the length of A has to be less than or equal to the length of B. All right. So let's go ahead and prove this. And we're going to uh, do this by starting with B and swapping out with elements of A until we manage to prove our point. So we've got sort of a, a two-step process, or mm, yeah, a two-part step, which is repeated, if that makes sense. Okay, so so first part, let's see. So since B spans V, um, it's still a spanning set when we throw something else in. So when we, and so I'm going to write. Um, this this notation right here for this is a union of lists and it depends on what order it's written in so the u1 gets stuck at the front and then all the elements of b come afterwards so i'm defining this uh operation on lists right here in the middle of a proof which is probably bad form but too bad there you go okay um <clears throat> So we know that uh, when we adjoin u1 to the, the list, it still remains a, a spanning list. Um, but uh, we, we also know now that since uh, u is uh, some element of v, which is the span of b, we know that the resulting set is dependent. Okay. Because u is in the span, so it can be written as a linear combination of the w's. All right. So let's see. So by the lemma then, by the linear dependence lemma, Uh, we can remove some wj, and I don't know which um, j it is, so I'm just I'm going to include a second subscript. So j1 is going to be the first uh, the index of the first w that gets removed from the list, and and so key point uh, if we can choose it to be other than u1. And the lemma says that when we remove this guy, um, the span does not change. So in other words, if I look at um, L1, uh, if I take L1 to be uh, this, this new concatenated list minus 
uh, one of the W's. This one is still going to span V. And in particular, the length of L1 is equal to the length of B. Uh, it didn't change. It didn't change because we added an element and subtracted an element. Okay, so this is our, our sort of two-step process. So here's one and here's two. And now, th so this is this is how we go about um, swapping out a W with a U. Yeah, and so then we're going to repeat that process. So. Uh, repeating steps one and two, that's sort of an ugly two. There we go, repeating steps one and two. Um, <clears throat> so we, uh, we throw in the second thing from the U list and we subtract one of the W's, our second W to be removed will be W sub J2. Um, and this gives us a new list. So our new list <clears throat> looks like B, where we've adjoined U1 and U2, and then we've subtracted two of the Ws. And we know that the span of L2 is going to still equal V. And we know that the length of um, L2 is going to equal the length of our original B. Because once again, we've just uh, pulled one out and added one in. So the length stayed the same. Okay, and then so continuing doing the same thing again and again, we get that uh, LM eventually is going to be, and we'll have U1, U2, up to UM having been added to B. And then at this point, we've subtracted M of the Ws. Um, and so at this point, we've adjoined all of A to B, and then we've subtracted some of the Ws. And I don't know if I've subtracted all of the Ws in B or not, but, but it doesn't matter. We still know, however, that... Um, LM spans V and that the length of LM is equal to uh, the length of V. Okay, and so since LM contains each element of A, um, we have that the length of A is less than or equal to, just by containment, the length of LM, which is the length of B. And we are done. So in this proof, I have omitted a particular step. And there's, there's a there's a justification that needs to be made for why things work. And I want you to see if you can find it. And if you're having trouble seeing what I mean, think about how we used the hypotheses in proving this theorem, because you need to use the hypotheses when you prove a theorem.